All right, lesson 1.6, rules for exponents. We've been learning a lot about exponents, and now we're going to evaluate some of the rules. Okay, notice what happens here when you multiply two powers with the same base. You have a to the fourth power and a to the third power. So the first one, as a repeated multiplication, the a is a repeated factor four times. In the second expression, it, second um, term, it is repeated three times. So how many all together do you have? That's going to help us to determine what this rule or what we could do, an algorithm to evaluate these without having to write them out as repeated factors. So if we add the exponents together when you are multiplying variables, um, multiplying the expressions, it could be numbers, it could be as long as the base is the same. That's the key here. We have to have the same base. There are seven factors. All right, so if you want to summarize in words what the product of powers property actually is in math, it means that you can multiply powers with the same base by adding their exponents. So if we looked at it in just a generic form where you have, you know, a to the m power times a to the n power, you just add together that m and n. That could be any integers could be in place of that. So here's a number example for you. 4 cubed times 4 squared equals, now notice that this is not 16 to the fifth power, okay? When you use this property, you do not multiply the numbers. So it's one thing when we have just the letters, but it's another thing when we substitute in the actual numbers. Kids are so used to multiplying numbers together that they want to condense this and write 16 either to the fifth or to the sixth power. So what kind of mistakes are being made there if we're doing 16 to the fifth power or 16 to the sixth power? Okay. Using the product of powers property, we're going to look at Lake Powell. This reservoir behind the Glen Canyon Dam in Arizona can hold about 10 to the 12th cubic feet of water when full. There are about 10 to the 27th water molecules in one cubic foot of water. So about how many how many water molecules can the reservoir hold? Here's your solution. Okay. We're going to substitute in the values. And since there are 10 to the 12th cubic feet of water when full, we can multiply that to the amount of water molecules in one cubic foot. Since the bases are the same, we can apply the property and add the exponents and get 10 to the 39th power. So that's a 1 with 39 zeros after it. That's quite a lot. Okay, using the product of powers property. Now we're going to have some coefficients here. Now we can use that commutative property of multiplication because the 3 and the 5 are not raised to a power, we could simplify that, all right? So let's look at using commutative property. You can rearrange it and take the coefficients 3 and 5 and put those together because they don't have a power, but the x's do. And when we don't see an exponent next to the variable, the first one, um, we know that that does d indeed mean 1, okay? And we have to include it because it has to be counted. So we couldn't, when we combine them, remember we're adding the exponents if we just thought of it as being zero, which it couldn't be for another specific reason, um, we would get the wrong answer. So we have to count it as one. So then we have three times five times x to the sixth power, and we combine those to get 15 x to the sixth. What about the quotient of powers property? So there's a related rule for dividing factors. And here is an example that would show um, or suggest the rule. So if you have a to the fifth divided by a squared and you write it out as a repeated factor, you can see that they will cancel out because they will be equal to um, fractions equal to 1. a divided by a is 1. a divided by a. So depending on the number of um, a's in the denominator, 
would be the number of A's you could subtract from the numerator, and you're left with three factors, so A cubed would be the answer. Okay, so you could write down the words, the algebra, and the numbers to see this property in action. So, <clears throat> using both properties of powers. In a prob uh, problem like this, you want to simplify your numerator first, then combine it with the denominator. So, we'll go ahead and simplify by first using the product of powers property in the numerator, which means 3 times m to the fifth times m squared. Since the two bases of m have exponents, we can add the 5 and the 2 together. We will get, by simplifying that, 3m to the seventh power divided by 6m to the third power. Now, since the numerator and the denominator both have a base of m, we can subtract those exponents using the quotient of power. And notice how that m kind of moved to the numerator when we did that. We left the 6 behind because it's the coefficient. And then we can simplify the 3 and the 6 by dividing out a factor of 3 from each of them. And if the, new, if the coefficient is a 1, if you're left with 1, m to the 4th over, you know, 2, you can leave it like that. We won't count that wrong, okay? But knowing that coefficients of 1, just like exponents of 1, usually aren't written. So these, that would be the same. It would be the same as if you left it um, at this step. If you literally, like, divided by 3 and got a 1, divided by 3 and got a 2, and wrote it as 1, m to the fourth over 2. If that helps you, like as a placeholder, um, that's fine too.